they say, sex sells. But today, all that sexiness and all those dollars is what's driving a wedge between a relationship. My next guest, LaShawn, says that the buns and basketball is what brought her and her daughter, Julissa, together. But now, buns and basketball is what's tearing this mother and daughters apart. I know y'all like, what is buns and basketball? <laughs> Trust me, y'all about to find out. All right, listen, LaShawn, please come on out and talk to me real quick. I can have a hug. How are you doing? You look amazing. Thank you. Woo! Um, usually I never ask someone their age, but I think in this moment, would you mind if I ask you your age? That's fine. How old are you? I am 46. 46. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, so, LaShawn, tell me about this betrayal before we get into the sort of the um, buns and basketball. The betrayal about my daughter, Jalisha, um, it, it, it was just a dagger in my heart that she started this with me and I feel like she should finish it um, yeah. because we always had a great relationship. Yeah, so she started Buns and Basketball with you. Yes. Yeah, tell us a little bit about what that is. Buns and Basketball is a lingerie basketball league, yeah. which, uh, which considered we wear thongs and we wear a jersey shirt. Okay, a thong and a jersey. Listen, I'm all about it, girl. Empower yourself, okay? Hold on, okay. So I just wanna know, how did you come up with this idea? How I came up with it, actually, um, I am a professional uh, model, sexy model. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I was a basketball coach for 13 years, made high school varsity in eighth grade. So I always loved the game. Mm -hmm. So I just combined um, that as my platform to create sexiness and a sport together. Yes. Listen, I love to create your own lane, OK? Because <laughs> I've never seen that. So how do you convince other people to play basketball on a thong? A lot of women come to me and they're like, yo, I really had a low self-esteem and I feel like this right here would build my confidence up. And actually I built a lot of lady, I inspired a lot of women to show what they have, their curves or no curves. Um, so all sides matter. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think there's something beautiful. Yeah, give it up. I think there's something very beautiful about the fact that through a game, you are empowering women. And yes. I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day because some people will look at this and judge, but if yeah. these women are actually getting a workout, they are actually feeling empowered. Yes. I think that's the most important thing for me to say, great, if it makes you feel sexy, if it makes you feel good, I support it 100%. Yes. Now, when it came to your daughter, she said you got her to convince her to play on the team. Yes. And to join this with you. How did, how did that come about? I guess she was broke. Okay. <laughs> okay, she was literally broke, needed money, and this was a platform for her to actually make money. Anyone that, that was, that's a part of this platform yeah. has grown. Got it. You know, you got other opportunities that people might say, hey, you got to look for this or whatever. How long have you wanted her to actually play in the league? Um, actually, this league's been going on for like three years now. So you and want her she's to play been, from the beginning? Yeah, she's been with me from day one. At first, she, she didn't want to play. And then when she saw that, hey, this is a money maker situation, she took it. Got it. And so what was her hesitation at the beginning? Because you said she didn't want to play originally. Oh, <laughs> because um, I guess she didn't want her buns hanging out. Oh, got it. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> yeah, OK. So what happened in the end where she decided and said, I can't do this no more? She got with this guy, my coworker, and I just feel like he pushed her away from our uh, mother and daughter love. Were the two of you really close before? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, I, taught your her, I taught her everything. I was her basketball coach, her mentor, her everything. We yeah. was, we're, if you see us together, we look like sisters. How do you feel that, um, that your daughter quit the team? It felt like a dagger in my heart, man. Yes. I really work hard for this. Yeah. To build a platform yeah. for her. <laughs> When a mother and daughter has a bond like no other, uh, that's, that's how a relationship was, basically. Yeah, you're tight. Real, real tight. It was just very disappointing. Um, um, 
You, you know, I, I, I never quit on her. She she just quit on me. Those are specific words. Yeah. You never quit on her, but you felt like she quit yeah. on you. So let's go ahead and bring her out and see if there's a bigger issue. So come on out, Jalisha. <laughs> nice to meet you. So um, I know that my producer told me you're backstage crying. What was going on? Because I can see you're still emotional now. She got me playing in the buns of basketball. That took forever for me to just say yes, because that's not me. I'm not into all that, you know, social media, entertainment, showing my body off, all that. And also, when I started, I wasn't broke. I had a good job, I had my own house, my own car. So you mean to tell me you didn't have, you had a job when, you, when we moved in together? Yes. No, I'm no, talking about didn't. before, but you said when I started Buns of Basketball, I was broke, right? Right. Didn't I just get a, what? Had my own money, <laughs> own car, nice. Everything. Taking care of myself. And I did that for you because you always want me to follow your lead, do whatever you do. And that's not me. You never asked me how I feel what I want to do. So what do you want to do? <laughs> I just want to do music, have a normal life, <laughs> not worry about what other people got to say about me or you. How long did you play the, with Bones and Basketball? Like a year and a half, probably almost, yeah, about two. And was it a happy time for you? At the time, yes. I met wonderful people, but, you know, at the same time, when it come to, you know, game time, Did I'm you like, like playing basketball? Yeah, I like playing basketball. Okay, so you did like playing? Yes, I did. That was the only reason why I continued to play. Did you like being with your mom around that time? Yeah. Okay. You've been receiving a lot of judgment about the Bunton Basketball League because you said you said you don't want to worry about what other people have to say. Tell me about well, like the comments you get. It's more so like, oh, um, you're a porn star now, you're a stripper, and that's the whole reason why I got off of social media now because people think they know me and they don't. Yeah. And I want her to really know me. Do you feel like your mom controls you? Yes, very much so. In what ways? Um, I'm going to say this. It's to the point to where now, you know, we ain't talking. You know, um, it's just been a, a wedge between us to where she has no control over me now. Every time she asks me to do something when Garden of Entertainment, I do it. But again, I never want to do that. It's like you pimping me out, using me. How does it make you feel hearing your daughter say those things? A lot of things that people do in this world, it is for entertainment, but people judge them a certain kind of way. I mean, maybe it might sound like I probably, not, not totally that word pimping, but I just felt like it was a platform that I it's a way want. to, <laughs> I understand, but, um, but she if said something she feels... happened to me, this is, this is let down to you. So you don't have to play, you can just control it. If something happened to me, well, I'm I'll, leaving I want, I'm this. glad you use that word control because I know that you, in your mind, you're saying you're setting up something for her future. Yeah. And I do believe that like a foundation is important for you. Yeah. But your daughter is saying that as you're building the foundation, she feels controlled. She feels as if you're not hearing her. And that's what I want to know. Because well, I'm, I'm, I'm not taking away from you building the foundation. I know yeah. you're doing the best that you can. Yeah. But talk to her about that. She says she feels controlled by you. Like I you apologize if you feel like that. But like I said, it's all enough but love, baby. People get judged all the time but, if you but, good, do good or bad. But that's not the love I want. Well. What type of love do you want? Yeah. I just want her to be a mother. She, she don't know how to do that. Wow. Everything is money to her. So... With your music career, who, who started your um, music career to make sure that you can get into a platform? Who's, who helped you start all this? And who that's got fine. you out there? And that's but who fine. got you out there? That's fine. But Did I get you out there, yes, yes or no? 
But Thank you. I'm out there because of a name that you made for yourself. Not, oh, Julie should So people oh. don't know you? They know me by, oh, your mom still does this, that, and that. Oh, it ain't nothing really good that you're really saying because this how you know me. So all these, now, Buns and Basketball only been three years. Mm -hmm. So how was our mother before this? You how did I treat you, you? How did I treat you? You weren't. How, Lily? It's money to you. Everything is about money. The day I turn. Have you ever been without? You always drove all the fancy cars right. and everything. You 15 years old right. and own a whole Mercedes Benz. Who, who right. has that? Right. But again, BMW material stuff that I didn't, I don't want. There's been a lot of things that I've heard from both of you. And the beauty of me being an outside perspective is that I can hear your point of view and I can hear your point of view. You grew up in a situation where you didn't have and you just wanted somebody to be there for you, to give you a foundation, to support you. And so as you grew up, that is how you felt would be the best thing to do for your daughter. Acts of service and gifts. I'm gonna do for you, I'm gonna do for you. Like, that's you showing your love. And you received it. And you got all that stuff and you benefit from it. And that's the truth of the matter. Yeah. Even hearing your mother say she gave her master bedroom up so that you and your man could sleep in it. We know at the end of the day that she's not a bad mother. But I also understand your perspective. You're saying, Mom, you're giving me, giving me, giving me because that's what you thought was the foundation I needed, but that's not the foundation I needed. You're giving her the foundation you needed, but she's telling you that she needs a different foundation. She's telling you that, that I needed you just to talk to me, to hear me, to understand that even though you gave me these things that I do believe you appreciated. Absolutely. That you actually wanted her to just say, what do you want? How am I affecting your life? And this doesn't make you a bad mom because you were working your butt off to, literally working your butt off to try to give her a life that you didn't have. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be funny, but like, but at this, the rate of the matter is that she was saying, I don't need that. I just want you to talk to me. I will say this to you, is I want you to at least be able to leave here and letting your mom know that you can acknowledge that she did love you and that she did try her best. And if you don't feel that way, I don't want you to say it, but do you feel that your mom tried her best with you? Can you at least say that to your mother? I know you tried. You really did. I wouldn't be here without you, of course. That's a step. Because I needed you to hear that as a mother to know you weren't a bad mom. But now what I need you to do is to acknowledge, yes, I was giving you things, but I wasn't hearing you when you said you needed something else. And I'm sorry. Can you tell your daughter that you're sorry for not hearing what she actually needed? I'm sorry for not hearing what you actually needed and what you wanted. I, I've done my best, and I, I'm sorry. I was fooled that I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, I didn't make you do anything that you didn't want to do. There's a part of that that's not fully true. And the reason being is because as your daughter, I'm sure there was an unconscious pressure that you felt to have to make sure mom feels like I'm there for her. Yeah. You actually used language at the beginning of this, which is she quit on me. And that makes a child feel like if I quit on mom, if I speak up about what I need, mm -hmm. she's going to reject me. Yeah. That's where those abandonment issues come from. Am I hitting it on the nail? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so can you apologize and say, I actually now realize that I didn't mean to force you to do things you didn't want to do, and I won't ever do that again. I apologize if I felt like I forced you to do anything that you didn't want to do. Could you please forgive me? <laughs> I love you. I was I would never quit on you. Just Talk to me more, and I'll be more understanding, okay? <laughs> uh, 
Love you, mommy. <laughs> Hold on, where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going. Right here to subscribe and right here to watch more, period.